Hey guys, my name is Tensor. Welcome back to the second part of our Redux list application tutorial. In today's tutorial, we're going to be talking a lot about middleware and we're going to be looking at how we can create side effects in the otherwise pure functions of the Redux reducers. We're also going to be adding a bit of time traveling debugging so that we can actually pick apart how our application is working. The main functionality that we want to add to this application is the ability to save and load our state through the shared preferences API. Because we want to use shared preferences, we need to add it as a dependency, and the current version is 0.4.2 at the time of this recording. Once we've got the shared preferences library, we want to come into our model.dart file, and then we want to create functions that will allow us to take our data and convert it to and from JSON. First, let's start with the item class. We'll create a from JSON constructor, which takes in a map and then takes that map and assigns the body key to body and the ID key to ID. To be able to take our data and then convert it to JSON, we can create a simple method called to JSON, which just creates a map with ID and ID as an integer and then body and then we just pass in body because it's a string. So this will allow us to take each of our items, turn it into JSON, and then we can put that into our shared preferences. We also want to do the same thing for our application state. And this is why we created the two functions above so that we can easily convert all of the items in the list into JSON and then put them into a JSON list. First, let's start with the from JSON constructor. So again, this is a name constructor and we take our items and we want to take the items out of the map that we're passing through here with the key being items. And we want to convert that into a list and then map over it. And we take each item out of this list and we convert those items into JSON individually. And then we, of course, put it back into a list and then that will allow us to then use it inside of our app state. The to JSON side of things for our app state is much easier because all we have to do is take our items and then put it into a map with the key being items. So it's just the same as what we did above except we only have the one field to worry about. Now that we've created the utility functions that we need to convert our models to and from JSON, we need to add a few actions to our Redux model. To make our middleware work properly, we need two actions. One action that will be dispatched from our user interface to the middleware, and then another action that gets dispatched from the middleware to our reducer. So we've got this get items action, which is what gets dispatched from the user interface, and then we've got the loaded items action, which gets dispatched from the middleware to our reducer. Because the get items action doesn't need any additional data attached to it, because it's just initiating a function, we're going to just leave it alone like we did with our remove items action. The loaded items action, however, needs to have a list of items inside of it so that we can serve the items from shared preferences back to our application. Naturally, we can create this list of items, which we'll call items, and then we just want to pass it into the loaded items action constructor. Before we create our middleware, let's edit our reducer. And all we want to do is add the new action, the loaded items action, to our item reducer so that it knows what to do in the case that that action is deployed. We can simply add another if statement to say if action is loaded items action, then we just want to return action.items, which is our list of items that is attached to the action. Like all of our other actions inside of the item reducer, this will then get wrapped inside of an app state class, which will then get sent back to the user interface. Now that we have all of this set up, let's create a new file inside of our Redux folder, which we'll call middleware.dart. Inside of this new middleware.dart file, we need to make a few imports. So we need dart async, dart convert. We also want the normal Redux package, and we want shared preferences. And we also want to expose our model and our actions to this file as well. 
let's create the helper functions that we're going to use to save our data into the shared preferences store and then of course load the app state from the shared preferences store and both of these will be asynchronous as well so keep that in mind with the save to preferences function we need to of course pass in our app state we'll then create an instance of shared preferences which we can then use to actually get a hold of the API then we want to take our app state convert it into JSON and use the JSON encoder to create a string and after we do that we can call preferences.setString and we can pass in a key which will be item state and then the string itself so we're putting the JSON into our shared preferences store and then we can retrieve it with our load from preferences function with this function we of course need to get an instance of shared preferences again and then we can use that instance of shared preferences to get a string out of this store and the string will have the same key as the one that we set up here which is item state so we just pass in item state so this will give us a JSON representation of the data that we saved inside of shared preferences we do want to check to see whether or not the string is null and if it's null that means that there's nothing inside of the shared preferences store and that means that we can just return an initialized state so that it doesn't mess up our application. Below this if statement, we can just say return app state dot initial state, which will call our initial state named constructor and then just set in a empty list. So when we first start this application and we do not have a shared preferences key value store initiated, it will try to find the state and instead it'll get null for the string and we'll just initiate our app state as normal inside of the if statement however we can just take our string and decode it from JSON and then we can take the resulting map and put it into our app state from JSON named constructor and then return it as a future of app state with that finished now let's create the actual middleware and to do this we can just create a function called app state middleware this takes in a store with our app state inside of it it takes in the action and then it takes in what's called a next dispatcher which we'll call next the next dispatcher is essentially just a function that we can call to chain this piece of middleware to the next piece of middleware if we have another one or to our reducer so we use this to essentially just keep passing actions through this piece of middleware to make things happen inside of our application in other words if we have an action that gets dispatched to this piece of middleware but it's not assigned to anything inside of this middleware then it will automatically be sent to our reducer in this case in our case however we're going to be using most of the actions inside of this piece of middleware because we want to be able to save our app state every single time the user adds an action removes an action or removes all of the actions and if it's one of these three actions then we'll save our state inside of shared preferences and this is pretty basic all we need to do is call our save to preferences function and pass in our store.state so now we have the ability to save this state into our shared preferences key value store. We want to be able to load that state back when the get items action is deployed from the user interface. For this if statement where we check if get items action has been executed, we want to await on load preferences and then we want to call the then method to take the resulting state out of the future and then pass it into our reducer. And we can do this by calling store.dispatch and then calling our other action, loaded items action, with the resulting state.items inside of it. So we're passing the list of items that we got back from our shared preferences store to another action, which then gets executed in our reducer. So it comes in here and then it just gets passed back from the reducer to wherever we need it. And that's really all we need to do to write this piece of middleware. While this is fairly basic, 
It allows us to execute side effects which interact with items outside of our control or do things that are outside of our application like reading and writing or reading from a database or reading from an API. And then it also allows us to keep our reducers pure. Let's now go into our user interface and add the logic that we need to use our middleware and to actually load our state back from our shared preferences store. So first let's import the middleware into our main.dart file and then we can come down to where we define the store here and we can add the middleware into it. The store has a field called middleware which takes a list of functions and in this case we only have the one middleware function that we want to set in there. So now when we add an item when we remove an item or when we remove all of our items it initiates the save into shared preferences but we also want to be able to take that data and then put it back into our application by loading it to achieve this we're going to make use of a widget which is inside of flutter redux called a store builder the store builder is a bit like the store connectors that we're using down here, except rather than turning our store into a view model, it listens to our entire store state and it allows us to recreate it based on the actions that we're sending in and out. So in this case, because we want to basically replace all of the state inside of our store with the stuff that we're getting back from shared preferences, we can use this store builder like this. So we add our widget called store builder to the outside of our main homepage widget. And of course we need to annotate this with app state. With this widget, we can make use of a field called onInit, which will allow us to initialize our store when this part of our widget tree is loaded into our application. For the onInit field, we can create an anonymous function which takes in the store and then dispatches to our middleware the get items action, which will then of course get the data and then serve it back to us. The store builder also needs a builder function which takes in the build context and then the data that we get back from calling on in it and we want to grab the entire store and then we just want to pass it into my home page. Of course to make this work properly we just need to amend our my home page widget so that it accepts a store in its constructor so we'll create a final store of app state and then we'll pass it into the constructor. This part is actually not necessary because the onInit function will automatically populate our store and our application will change to reflect that change. So we didn't actually have to pass the store into our my homepage widget, but I'm doing this because we're going to use it in a moment for another step. Here's our application inside of the emulator and we can check to see if shared preferences is actually working by adding a few items and then resetting the application. There is one thing that you do need to keep in mind when using shared preferences inside of an emulator and that is that oftentimes when you shut down the application it will not actually save things as it would in a actual device. Here we have four items inside of our list and I can click the trash cans like before to delete the items and I can also click the button to delete all of the items if I wanted to. If I hit Control F5 it will reset the application and you can see that all of the items still exist inside of the list which means that they were reloaded from shared preferences and then pushed back into our state. We can actually get a better look at this if we use what's called the Flutter Redux dev tools. So let's go ahead and install them and then let's set them up inside of our application. Inside of your PubSpec YAML you can add the Flutter Redux dev tools dependency and the current version at the time of this recording is version 0.3.0. .0. Now that we've got the dependency, we can go ahead and add it to our main.dart file. So we want to import package Flutter Redux DevTools, Flutter Redux DevTools.dart. We also want to import Redux DevTools backslash Redux DevTools.dart because, like with Flutter Redux, we also have the normal Redux DevTools, which have certain primitives that we need for this to work properly. In the top of our myapp build function, 
let's replace our normal store with a DevTools store. This is just a store with a bunch of extra things attached to it, which will allow us to use the actual dev tools inside of our application. Now down in our My App homepage, rather than just pushing a normal store into the constructor, we want to replace it with a dev tool store so that it knows that this store should have the functionality that we want. Finally, we can add a drawer to our scaffold and we'll just put a container inside of it and then inside of the container we'll put a widget called Redux DevTools and we'll pass in our store. And this will then allow us to actually look at how our store is working inside of our application. Here you can see that I've reloaded our application and luckily with our emulator it actually reloaded with all of the items still inside of it. You can see now I can open up the drawer and we've got this Redux time travel widget right here, which has a bunch of stuff attached to it. There's a slider here that I'm not sure that you guys can see very well, which I can take and pull to time travel through our state. So you can see down here the current state, which says instance of app state, and then it says the current action, which says instance of loaded items action. So this was the last action that was executed inside of this application. If I pull back this slider, you can see that the action that was executed before it was the get items action. And then when the application was initially opened, there's this dev tools action which was executed to initiate the dev tools properly. So as mentioned before, we execute the get items action from the user interface, which then goes to the middleware and then deploys the loaded items action, which then gets all of the items and puts them through the reducer. And you can see here, if I go back, the items are removed from our application. But if I go forward in time, the items come through our application. And of course, if I do a bunch of stuff like add items and remove items and delete items, now I can open up this panel and I can use this little scroll thing to scroll through every single one of the actions that has been deployed since the application has been open. So here you can see at the very end we have remove items action and that's why it's empty. And if I go backwards one, we get three of the items back because the last instance of action was the add items action. And then we've got a remove item action and then before it another remove item action. And then prior to that we have our loaded items action with all of our original four items added back in. So as you can see, these Redux dev tools are fairly easy to install into your Flutter application and they're extremely useful if you want to debug the application and take a look at the different things that are happening inside of your application. Alright guys, well I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, feel free to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the box below. And if you dislike the video, by all means, Download it as much as you like. Have a good night.